Hello, I'm ABX Toycam. Welcome back to episode 16 of my TU33 Let's Play. This is a Let's Play I started after the most recent major update came out for Minecraft on the console, and which so far I've had quite a bit of fun with. As you can see, if we look around here, we've built part of a city, we've got some houses, we've even got a farm started. But one thing I wanted to make today is admittedly kind of contrived because I decided I saw a really nice staircase and I was like, I need to build this in this world somehow. So we're going to take whatever we have a lot of, which is either sand, andesite, I guess is probably our best choice. Um, is there, oh, there's polished andesite too, as well as Birchwood and we're gonna make a really nice staircase and uh, you know because I was thinking like okay what, what can we fill a staircase to and if you look around the world it's actually quite flat so I guess what we'll be doing is we'll be making a giant tower we can call it the Toy Cat Tower and it will make Toy Cats Let's Play World great again so with that said I will be doing that as well as talking about Ukraine and Chernobyl and all that stuff in today's video because a lot of people have been kind of questioning uh, you know streams and stuff and I haven't actually gone over a lot of the details so yeah I'm gonna be talking about Chernobyl and radiation and the Ukraine as a whole as, or sorry just Ukraine as a whole as well as uh, of course, building this tower, which actually, where is the best place to build it? So yeah, that's what we're doing in today's video. Hopefully you do all enjoy it. If you do like it, please do like it and let me know because it helps out the channel a lot and lets me do like it. But yeah, let's get strength this one, shall we? So let's start by turning the birch wood into birch wood planks because we do need to make actual stair blocks from it. And then let's also start by working out where we'll put this tower because, you know, we kind of worked on the fringes of the t uh, of the city over here or it's it's now the fringes and we also got that over there i don't want it to be too close to anything or too far away from anything so i guess we should probably air somewhere over here which means actually wait wait here's a good idea so we just go like okay this is gonna be the crosswalk here if we make it like across the street diagonally from here so one two three four five and then this will be the first block um oh except that's there so then we'll make it the first block over here then boom, we can make this the corner. And although it will border the um, the the boat away, it will <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm sticking to that fun. Um, but yeah, even though it will border the boat away, it will be pretty cool. So yeah, we're gonna, I wanna use, you know, honestly, polished andesite looks a lot better than regular andesite. I'd argue this is probably one of the best polished blocks, whereas this isn't so great. So maybe I should use this for the corners still, because I don't know, variety. Or maybe I should just have it like be every other block. Wait, 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 does that work? Let's let's quickly try that now. So we make every other block andesite and everyone I kind of like that effect it gives me. It could be just me, but I think if we do that and then we make like a checker pattern, we'll make we'll have like a really cool tower, right? Is that just me? It's probably just me. But you know, that's this Let's Play world is all about making things that are unique, and that's why we're gonna stick to it. So, uh, yeah, we'll do it for a little bit, and then, or maybe just the first few layers, and then we'll make something else off that. But let's work on the staircase, the one that I was like, oh, I, I saw a staircase, and I just had to build it. Because basically, um, you know, it, it seems like a simple tip, but you know, I've, you've seen spiral staircases before where you build around a staircase. But I saw a really cool way to actually use the upside down staircases that I probably should have learned when upside down staircases came out. You know, in 1.2, or I guess it'd be like TU12. You know, there's only 20 updates ago I should learn this. But basically, yeah, if you use um, Butchwood Stairs, there's this really cool effect you can get where, um, so, you know, normally what you'd do is you'd be like, oh, I'll just place a block here and then I'll have a staircase over there, right? And then so on and so forth. But if you make your staircase upside down here and then you also have an upside down staircase over here, so you kind of use three staircases per staircase. Um, then if you actually, okay, so we'll do this a few layers so you can actually see it. Although we did that slightly wrong. Yes, yeah, so we need to be really careful that we actually orient these in the right way. Yeah, if we actually do it uh, if, as long as we face the correct direction, we should be able to, again, if it should, bit big should here, we should be able to actually make this whole thing work. So again, we gotta make sure it's in the right direction. And what you can actually see is, at least in my opinion, it has this really cool effect of like being really jaggedy and edgedy, but it looks like it's just a snake culling up it. And I think for a spiral staircase, this would be cool. So this will go up like 30, 40 blocks and wherever, the, or I don't know how long big the tower will actually be actually. But yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And while we do that, let's talk a little bit about Ukraine. Cause there's been a lot of, um, you know, people asking uh, about, you know, stuff like, hey, it's okay, you're in Chernobyl. Does that mean you're going to die of radiation now? <laughs> like, people are being genuinely concerned, like, it's okay, you know you're going to have, uh, I don't know, cancer or this, because that's how it works. And uh, although I guess the assertion is correct, that, oh, yeah, um, as it turns out, you know, radiation is bad for you. There is a lot of um, kind of stuff around that. And also, an interesting little thing is I love that, um, you know, people who play video games, which I assume is most people who follow me, or... Yeah, if you if you if you, pl if you watch my if you watch that you know the Minecraft videos I make, you probably play at least one video game. That being Minecraft, but yeah, people who play a lot of video games seem to know a lot about Chernobyl because it you know appeared in um, Call of Duty Four of course, it apparently appeared in quite a few other video games, and also has has a whole bunch of movies about it. So yeah, a lot of people know about Chernobyl, and a lot of people know that it's kind of not a good idea to just be uh, chilling there. So what was I doing there, and why? So yeah, basically I, I went to Chernobyl because um, I'm trying to visit every country in Europe. Uh, if you don't know, because it's, it's really, really cheap to get flights from any place in Europe to another place. And it's like, oh, you can just go there for a weekend and spend a non-significant amount of money. And yeah, it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so basically that's what I've been doing. And one of the countries, obviously, is Ukraine. And Ukraine is actually the second poorest country in Europe. Like, um, 
in terms of like per person, obviously if you measure the country's wealth versus a tiny country, it's not too great. But because they have so many people, but they're kind of poor for that, they're one of the, they're the second poorest country. Uh, they're the second poorest country in uh, you, uh, Europe per person, and that's been the fact for a long time because obviously they're part of the USSR. And while they were a part of the USSR, um, they had a lot of nuclear reactors. Uh, they still do. I think they still generate all their energy from nuclear. Also, we're going to have to now go make the underside of the staircase, which is going to be tricky. Um, but yeah, so they generate a lot of their energy from nuclear, and of course they had a big, a big nuclear meltdown um, back in 19... I, I, I always get confused, it's the 80s or the 70s. It was just before the end of the Soviet Union. So yeah, uh, basically they, they had a big nuclear wet, wet meltdown, and it's still the biggest nuclear disaster in human history. And what makes it such an eerie place to visit, and the reason... Um, that, you know, like, it's really, really, uh, I, I know, the, 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 you know, the, the eeriness is not just the fact that a nuclear meltdown occurred and that a lot of radiation seeped out, and it went all over Europe, by the way, like, there's hundreds of thousands of people affected by this, but that, that's not even the spookiest bit. The spookiest bit is, first of all, um, you know, the fact that, uh, obviously, you know, the, the, all, the t all the places nearby, they evacuated 300,000 people. Most of them were told they could come back, so they had to leave their stuff to get it done, uh, go in time, but basically none of their stuff came back. So there's like, there's basically, uh, you know, 50,000 people used to live here, now it's a ghost town. That's basically the summary of uh, Pripyat, the closest town to the reactor. And uh, yeah, it's really, really um, bizarre to go there and check that out. So one of the reasons I wanted to go is to actually see it for myself, because, you know, there's an abandoned theme park that, or, yeah, the abandoned theme park like everyone sees. I wanted to just see that and kind of... Uh, I know, in my head, like, you can almost, like, hear the voices, right? And that, that sounds weird to say. And yeah, I decided to check that out. And uh, I just wanted to kind of get a few uh, facts out there. The first one is, like, so Toy Cat, you went into a zone of deadly, deadly radiation, which has killed hundreds of, oh, which has killed thousands of people and which has uh, radiated hundreds of thousands. Why? Uh, first of all, it's actually not so bad. A lot of people think, like, oh, it's Toy Cat, you know, you've got cancer now or something. Uh, it's not actually how it works. So radiation is measured in, um, I believe it's measured in serviettes or micro serviettes for small evidences. And basically, it's one of those things where it doesn't just happen immediately. Like, if, if you just stand somewhere that's radiated, it's actually not bad in the first second or half second it only gets bad uh, the longer you stand there because you know you're, you're continuously exposed to it uh, i guess kind of like a fire right like you can um you can put your hand in a fire and it's not so bad um even if it's like one of those 200 degree ones uh like okay so you know <laughs> this is like a terrible but you know how in school you'd always put your hand through the fire and it'd be just fine or like on the bunsen burners it's kind of like that. Is a bunch of burner an international thing? It's kind of like that, but with radiation. And because I was only there for a couple of hours, it's not too bad. And also, one of the things that they kind of told us to reassure us, but for me, it's like, oh, that's actually kind of terrifying, is that when you're in a plane, you actually are exposed to a decent amount of radiation just from that. And they're like, ah, oh, so, oh. Also, I could be doing this so much easier if I did that. That's a genius idea. I'm going to start doing that from now. But yeah, basically, uh, they're like, oh yeah, while well, you're in a plane, you're actually exposed to much more radiation than you'll be from here. And uh, even, so I had a Geiger meter, like I rented one, because I was like, you know what? Probably a good idea to know how much radiation I'm in, because it was fun to look around for hotspots too. But um, basically, yeah, I, there was more radiation on the, on a plane than there is at the, like, literally next to the reactor which melted down all those years ago. And uh, that's kind of a scary thing. But yeah, again, um, the, the really crazy stuff about um, Chernobyl and about you know, the nuclear reactor that failed, isn't just, um, you know, the way that it failed and all that stuff. It's the it's the stuff that came as a result. So like I said, all the people just kind of, you know, left, were told they could come back and then didn't. So there is literally just apartment buildings where, you know, there's all their stuff just left there. And because I, I looked it up online, you're not meant to be uh, unsupervised, so maybe I shouldn't say that I was, but let's just say I accidentally was unsupervised by the, um, you know, one of the official... Ukrainian border officials or whatever and um, yeah you could just go through one of these apartments and you could see like although some people have clearly touched there before because you know there's a lot of tours that go there apparently or at least there's a few tours that go there um, basically yeah you can just go inside and see like these people just used to live here there's you know there's so much spooky stuff like I saw a picture of a cat book that I posted on uh, like Instagram or something I you know there's um there was a, um, a maths book that a little girl had been uh, slowly working through and then there's just suddenly you know halfway through a page it just stops it's like yeah that's kind of crazy. She's probably dead now, and I know it was kind of it was it was spooky and uh, also kind of an interesting experience. Like uh, you know, everywhere I've been so far is kind of got a happy story. Ukraine's story isn't happy. Uh, like I mentioned, it's the it's the second poorest country in Europe. It's been kind of oppressed by the USSR for a long time, and um, yeah, that's kind of that. So this isn't meant to be like a, a big like oh let's let's be down about how sad the world is. Sometimes it is just kind of like uh, explaining the whole Chernobyl situation. It is it is a real place, and a lot of the real facts are kind of scarier than um. You know what you might think like uh, for instance uh, again one of the things that like really really blew my mind is because again it was under the control of the ussr at the time uh because they wanted to get this fixed as soon as possible because they realized oh yeah there's all this invisible radiation well yeah basically invisible radiation which is just leaking out and killing people 
Basically, what they did is they told people to go in and they gave them a lot of money, like a you know a fixed amount per year for the rest of their life, knowing that there's a decent chance they're not going to do it. And because they get all their readings wrong, because the um the way you me measure radiation, it can only go up to a certain amount. And because it hit the uh, you know the top amount, it was actually like ten times higher. And they're like, oh, it's probably just that amount. So they exposed a bunch of people. Also, we did we did this wrong, didn't we? We did do this wrong. See, that's that's why you check. Although actually, I kind of like this. Yeah, okay, we'll have checker marks, and then we'll just work out something later. later. So, we're going to find a bed, which I guess... Oh, there's one conveniently placed in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, we're going to do that. So, um, yeah, basically, the, the key point is that they just sent people in, and this is a, a bunch of crazy stuff. Chernobyl's spooky and creepy and all that sort of stuff. That's the key point behind that. Uh, I recommend, if you are going to Europe at some point, it's probably one of the the more interesting places, because, again, most most places have this cool national story. Uh, and Chernobyl is just um, a, little bit, a little bit more realistic and... And haunting, and I I don't know if haunting is good, is a good term in this situation, but that's uh, how we're gonna describe it. So um, the key point though is that if if you're worried that I have radiation sickness or something, I probably don't. Although I found some of the highest patched radiation because again got the Geiger meter, and I was like, oh yeah, that's that's not a good thing that I just stood in that for a few seconds. So. Yeah, for the most part, though. Oh, a fun fact that you might want to know is that, one, uh, San Francisco is, like, I think it's 0.30 by default, which is actually higher than Chernobyl, the town, uh, and even a lot of places in Pripyat, literally next to the reactor. So, um, if you live in San Francisco, sorry to bum you on that one. Or, again, it's meant it's meant to reassure you, but I know it's going to do the opposite. And then the second point. Also, what should we build up here? Like, I want to have a viewing tower, and I guess this is the highest point now, so we can do that. But, like, I don't know. Okay, so I guess... Okay, there's got to be, like, a viewing deck, so if we just pretend... The two blocks over here is the wall. But now it'll be made out of this. I guess it should be made out of this instead. So there's going to be a wall up here, right? Um, and then we can just kind of make it extend out using the regular andesite. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then we'll have like four viewing decks, one for each direction. And then we can make like kind of a cool octagon around it or like a, a diamond. So if we just find the very center point, which it actually isn't too difficult when it's like this, um, what we can actually do is just uh, one, two, three, four. And then one, two... Yeah, okay, I kind of like what we've got going on here. So yeah, something I've been uh, considering recently is kind of the, the Let's Play as a whole. I, I think I've said everything about um, Shinobu. I, I usually do travel logs, by the way, uh, on the second channel, in case you are curious about the random places I go. But uh, I, did, I only did a couple short ones while I was in Shinobu, because I went with a friend. It's like, there's, there's always an element to, like, doing weird stuff in public and pulling someone else up there, because it's kind of weird enough to just, um, you know, when someone sees you and they're just like, ooh. <laughs> and every now and then in a public vlog, you'll see that, and it's my favorite thing to, to look out for. So, I know, that's a, that's a fun tip for you. But yeah, that's just why I didn't do much there. So, anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about something I've been considering the Let's Play, because I, I always, you know, every, every um, the Let's Play is one of the least popular on my channel, but yeah, at the same time, a lot of people really, really do like it. And I think, first of all, if, if you're one of those people, and you're here, and you're like, oh yeah, I was waiting for Let's Play Monday, Monday. that's pretty cool, but, um, I also sometimes think, like, well, there's clearly a lot of people that aren't too down for it, and we should probably work out why that is. Because, you know, once you know why something's happening, you can either work on it, or you can just understand why. And also, should we put, like, some fence posts here? Because I feel like this is super dangerous otherwise. You know, let's let's deal with that later. Also, we probably should have built the tower before this, because now it's going to look really weird. Because now we have to, like... You know, okay, let's let's deal with that later. Let's <laughs> let's just let that be a problem for, for later me to deal with. So, uh, we actually probably need to go get a bunch of andesite, which is what we're doing a little bit. But for now, yeah, we got this kind of. So, um, yeah, the, the let's play, like, I, I feel like I get this really weird hybrid between, like, strange building that you might be able to use yourself. Because I feel like this staircase tip, it's going to go in some video at some point. Because I really, really like this staircase. But, um, yeah, hopefully you learn something from that. Uh, but I, I, I do always get curious as to, like, how to get the balance just right. And I'd love to know from all of you in who are watching right now. You know, well, I have ran out of andesite. Well, I guess we'll just start building up from there, shall we? So, we'll take the staircase down. Oh, actually, it's faster just to do this. Uh, I, I love how that works, so you just go through the tiniest bit of water, like point, point 0.4 blocks thick or something, and we're still going to be fine. Uh, and then, yeah, from here we'll just build up like this. Is it going to look okay? Um, yeah, a, a check and mark base makes it more distinguished. Uh, that's a building tip. <laughs> oh, there's andesite down here. Oh, perfect. That was that was the game giving me fate. Well, they give me a, a hint there. So, something also you might not have noticed, as I now have Unbreaking um, Free on the pick and Silk Touch 1 on the pickaxe, which means I shouldn't be using it just for pickup for andesite, but... Just for pick up andesite, just for picking up andesite. But at the same time, we do need some andesite, so you know, there's that. And plus, I'm gonna silk touch a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff later, including the diamonds everywhere. In fact, should we do that uh, towards the end of this episode? Because, okay, hello, creeper, how's it going? I'm just gonna let you blow up. Perfect. <laughs> that's that's my favorite way to do it, creepers. Now, like, I'm getting better and better at just uh, 
you know, avoiding their attacks by just being apathetic. Because although you can avoid their damage altogether, and it's a little bit tricky, if you're just willing to take a little bit of damage, you're honestly mostly fine of this stuff. So I'm going to just avoid that skeleton too. That seems like a solid idea for me to stick to. And yeah, this is like 30, 40 something. That's a good amount. So let's stack ourselves out there. Or let's actually just find a way out. Let's That's something we can very easily do. Okay, and run past another creeper. And another explosion. So, yeah, there should be an exposed entrance to this cave somewhere. I think we could waste the four blocks and get out, but the only thing I've got on me right now is andesite, and that seems like it's counterintuitive. Oh, I bet this goes to... No. Okay, well, that was that was a fun little loop we ran. Um, but yeah, I'd love to know from uh, everyone watching this right now, like, what sort of... Div uh, you know, um, I guess, what, the, what, what sort of ratio you watch it for? Like, do you like the... The stories about and learning about whatever we do in each episode, because you know, there's always something wherever I like to talk about, whether it was linguistics last week or where it's Ukraine this week, which by the way, a lot of people call it the Ukraine, and um, it's actually called um, like, uh, well, it's it, it should be called Ukraine, like, because it's it's not the country. If you say the, it kind of implies it's a province, I think, whereas you know, it's, it's just it's a country, it's like you don't call England the England, or you don't call America the America. I guess some Americans probably call it the America because they believe they're the only one. But there is a few other um, countries on that continent. But yeah, back to, <laughs> to back to the point. Uh, that's kind of that. And uh, yeah, I'd love to know what you think. With the comments, leave one down below. And we'll, we'll, we'll start a thing there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the thing will be, but we'll start a thing. And it'll be a, it will be a beautiful thing. Anyway, so yeah, this is our polished andesite used up. I probably should have made it a bit more round and even, but we didn't. So <laughs> that's a big mistake. But now we can just go back to the top. We can make the viewing deck a little bit better. Because from down here, I think it actually will look quite cool. Because then we can make the tower end up with a nice point. And yeah, I, I think that'll be great. So, we're going to make Toy Cat City great again. Which, by the way, I, still, I, don't, I don't know if we have a proper name for this place yet. But I think Toy Cat Topia is one that I'm, I kind of like. Because it's, it's got the T, you know, the alliteration, Toy Cat Topia. Um, but maybe that's just me. So, anyway, yeah, let's um, finish this up by placing a few blocks around here. Got a nice viewing deck on most sides now. So, yeah, from here you'll be able to see the harbour. We'll be able to see the village apartments and some villagers coming in and out, and that'll be nice. Uh, as well as my houses, I guess. And then from here, the windmill. Uh, there'll be another farm there. I think we need to do that. Wait, we could have to. We, what we should do is just next to it, build a bigger windmill with a like a bigger farm. That's a totally great, a good, great idea. And then uh, yeah, that'll be that. So yeah, like like in the idea of it so far. Also, I want to start using a different block because I andesite and birchwood. I feel like they have this really nice connection because they they look just different enough where you you're never gonna confuse them. Also, we need to build around here like that and just pretend that's not there. They have this really nice kind of, yeah, synergy to them where, like, something about the grey and, like, what, what even colour is that? Beige? Grey, grey and beige. They're both kind of boring colours by themselves. When you combine them, you get, uh, in my opinion, kind of nice look. So, that's something I'm totally down with. Anyway, let's just finish up over here. Three more blocks. And then, boom, we got ourselves... Our little thing. And then we just have to work out some way to end it on top. But I don't know how to do that yet. So what we'll do instead is we'll... Okay, well, okay, wait, wait, wait. So up here, we could have like a different thing. Or we could just use andesite. We'll just use andesite. And then also we need some fence posts maybe. And that's going to be good. So yeah, we've built a tower. We don't have like... <laughs> we have all of the tower besides the top and the middle. And that might sound like we're missing two thirds of a tower there. Ow, that's still hurt. Only half a heart? How does that make... Okay, whatever. Um... Yeah, it sounds like we have half a tower, and if you look at the tower from a distance, um, or two thirds of a tower, I, I, in fact, I kind of like this as like an art installation. Yeah, part of me wants to keep this as like a, because if we build the top of the tower and then we just leave the middle out, it could be like a beautiful expression of art. Is, is everyone else liking that idea? Okay, so as well as leaving the actual valid comment on that, um, we're going to have to vote on like expression of art or um, actually finishing the tower, because I actually really like that. Again, I like the way the staircase looks, so... I think if we finish up the top somehow, which we could totally do, then we can make a, a beautiful thing there. So anyway, yeah, that's uh, the tower. That was our build for today. Uh, I, I need to come back with a bunch of andesite, so you'll see that in some background gameplay. Which is, by the way, um, I, I tend to use a lot of um, background let's play from the, uh, background gameplay from this let's play uh, for stuff like that. So if you notice, like, the world, it is the same world. It's not just a suspiciously similar one. Uh, but yeah, now we're going to use the Silk Touch pickaxe, which, again, I entirely forgot about until I mentioned it then. I was like, oh yeah, it doesn't just have unbreaking, it has Silk Touch. I'm going to go Silk Touch up those diamonds, because everyone, whenever I go down there, they look at them, they're like, ooh, well, these these diamonds sure do look um, enticing. You should mine them, Toy Cat. But I actually couldn't, because it's better to... You know, if you if you do have the opportunity to wait and then eventually get them with fortune. But now we have a silk touch pickaxe. We can pick them up and we... Oh, I must have already done it. Did I do all of them? 
I hope I didn't do all of them. Otherwise, that means I probably have some bad memory problems. Oh, I bet I totally did. Are the diamonds gone from there too? They are. Where did the diamonds go? Okay, no, I didn't get them. That's fine. There's just something else missing nearby. So here you're going to see. Oh, one diamond. Two diamond. Oh, it's just two diamonds. So we actually don't have enough for another pickaxe to get the fortune yet, even if we mine these normally. So I guess we should look around. Because I remember I found another stack of diamonds. Uh, or another set of diamonds. I just don't remember the way to them. Well, well you know what? We're down here. Let's get some andesite anywhere. And let's finish up the points I wanted to raise because I feel like I left a couple of ends open. So yeah, I, I, um, I am I, I'm not living in um, Chernobyl. And though, uh, another fun fact is that Chernobyl isn't actually the town. So you might think that, you know, the town with uh, the spooky amusement park and uh, all that sort of stuff is called Chernobyl, but it's actually called Pripyat. Uh, Chernobyl is just a really big nearby town and they decided to name the reactor, which exploded and killed all the people uh, after Chernobyl. So just another fun fact. And second of all, uh, the, the amusement park never actually opened to the public. Um, it technically did for like a day because basically um, they built it and they intended for it to open on, it was some ridiculous like Soviet day or something, but it was on, on like a big uh, national occasion. But then the reactor happened and because people go to, went to the bridge and they kept getting irradiated, but they couldn't tell people not to without you know, telling them something incredibly scary and alerting them and stuff. Uh, what they just uh, did is they opened up the theme park that day, uh, or the, the amusement park, and that is why uh, it's technically open, and you'll see some pictures of it open, but it was open for a very short amount of time. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, Ukraine as a whole was a pretty cool country. Uh, super, super cheap because their currency has fallen so much against the dollar. Like, um, it costs... I think like a pound for a bottle of vodka. Uh, I, 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 know, I know vodka isn't the, the benchmark of how much something costs, but that's like my favorite cheap price. Um, and like, you know, like a, the equivalent of like a subway was like 70p in like the central of the city, whereas you all know it's exp more expensive. And um, also my favorite little side note about Chernobyl, because while I was there, uh, as part of the tour, like I got a five star meal from inside Chernobyl. It's the only restaurant I've ever seen, which was very, like it had a bunch of signs saying, we we, we source all of our food from outside of Chernobyl. <laughs> like, uh, you know, imagine you go to China and they're like, we definitely source all our food from the UK. Um, except, yeah, that's how it went here. Uh, they they made very, very sure to make sure that we knew that they didn't source the food themselves because nobody wants a radiated cow and stuff. Or at least I don't. Um, I, I'm sure, you know, uh, radiation actually apparently has a taste. So that was one of the ways that I was going to look out for, like, if I accidentally walked into, like, the hottest spot ever and it was too much the um, Geiger meter. Yeah, radiation actually apparently, according to people who have been at the reactor when it was at its peak radiation, actually has a taste. So if you start tasting metallic stuff and, I don't know, your microwave's open, uh, is, is that going to work like that? I don't know. But yeah, uh, then maybe you are in an area with lots of radiation. So that's a pro tip for life. Um, hopefully you learned something from this video, whether it's about new, uh, radiation, which by the way, uh, is super harmless and you actually get some from eating a banana too. So uh, if you eat if you eat a thousand bananas a day, then you actually will eventually have radiation poisoning. So hopefully there's some useful information there somewhere. Uh, hopefully something, something, something. I've said hopefully a lot. So if I just say hopefully five more times, then it will lose its meaning, and then that'll be great. So hopefully, 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 I'll see you all in the next video. So thank you all very much for watching, and goodbye.